The sacred map of the West Kazakhstan region has six locations. The Buki Horde Historical and Museum Complex stand out among them. They are part of the program on tourification of the Republic. It is of historic value not only for this particular region, but also for the entire country, because the command center of Jangir Khan, the well-known reformer, was here. People claim that the golden era of Buki Horde was under his rule. Hello, I'm Shimbalad Pazil, and this is Travel Around Kazakhstan. The history of this thrilling area is full of unexpected turns and events. The ruler of the Junior Jews, Buki established the horde in steps, left free after the Volga Kamiks went to China. The Buki Horde was founded in 1801 between rivers of Volga and Ural, part of districts of current western Kazakhstan, Atarao regions in Kazakhstan, as well as Astrakhan and Volgograd counties in Russia joined the Buki Horde. People always talked about it with the prefix the first. The first hospital, publishing house, treasury, museum, women's school, and secular college opened here in Kazakhstan. The Horde of Han has many Islamic miktibs. Particularly, all clans and branch of clans had their mullah. Besides, numerous graduates of these schools went to the best madrasas of Bukhara and Tashkent to have higher education. The secular school operated in Buki Horde too. The best alumni enrolled to the Nepliyuev Officer Training Corps in Orenburg. However, the largest number of these achievements involves not Buki, but his son Jangir. He administered the horde as Han until 1845. Jangir Khan chose this land for a good reason. He toured many places. He got interested in this territory because it located near the Astrakhan region. Climatic conditions allow continuously herding cattle all year round. Our ancestors did that too. As historians say, Han established the unique system of administration. It consisted of several functional units. They had chancellery, deputy group, council of 12 bais. The system also included the Yesaul Institute, Bazar Sultans, and 14 Han messengers. Moreover, the Buki Horde set up the position for Akun, the most important cleric of the Hanat. Jangir Khan lived only for 44 years, but experts still give ambiguous assessments of this historical figure. He is still the subject of disputes and disagreements. There are several explanations for this. On the other hand, Jangir brutally suppressed the rebellion under the Issa Tao, Tao Manuli, and Mahambiet. On the other hand, he was ahead of his time and brought progress to Kazakh steppe. The Buki Horde Museum Complex now carefully stores all historical objects, belongings, and documents related to ruling of Jangir Khan. It is not easy to get to Buki Horde Museum. It located 600 kilometers from city of Urals, Two ways to this tourist spot are available, by bus or personal motor transport. 
a railway station, is nearby the Seikin village. Unfortunately, no train stops there. The railroad could be the real panacea for tourists who wish to visit the complex, especially given that we do not have interregional flight connections to gallery. We already raised a question about railroads at the meeting of two heads of states. Sequences stopped before, and we have the station too. But the point is that despite road is on the territory of Kazakhstan, it belongs to Russia. Negotiations on renewal of station are underway. The car is a single option to reach the Bukihan Museum. The road is sometimes in bad state. Right now, reconstruction works of the track connecting Uralsk and Saikin village are ongoing. The latter is the closest location to Jangir Han's headquarters. Fifteen years ago, the Museum of Buki Hoard received the status of historical museum complex. It is a well-deserved government decision because it has the sole remaining Han quarters in the whole country. You can see how rulers of the Kazakh state live and work. Both Kazakhstan and Russia residents show wide interest, even though it is hard to go to institution. Histories of both countries often interconnect, and this is one of these places. The Lake Elton Resort is in 90 kilometers from the historical museum. Numerous travelers from there want to familiarize with the distinctive Kazakh history and culture. About 18,000 guests visit the complex every year. We have an opportunity to increase the number of visitors to 30 or 40,000. This site is in high demand, both from citizens of border districts of the Russian Federation and Kazakhstan. We even have other foreigners interested in it. Such attention caused by the fact that Buki Khanat complex has preserved countless historic properties in their primary forms. Travelers call the Buki Khanat complex the museum under an open sky. It has more than 80 constructions of the 19th century. The Museum of Public Education is among attractions of the Buki Hoard capital. It previously housed the women's gymnasium. Besides school institutions and already listed sites, the capital also included typography, pharmacy, and archive. The Lord strongly backed planting of broadleaf and coniferous trees. He wrote out seeds from Russia, brought new seedlings. He also banned cutting leaves and cattle grazing near them. Later, grapevines grew in these semi-arid lands with groundwater. Locals say that what Jungir planted still develops. The Han's headquarters represented the settlement stretched into a long line. It had several straight streets and clearly designated living quarters. A lot of officials, explorers, left detailed memoirs about Han's house structure and decoration. So did scholars. In 
in times of Jangir's administration, they transferred lands into the private property of nomads, who convert to a settled way of living. It happened for the first time in the history of Kazakh Hanats. As his power increased, Jangir dramatically reformed the old tax system. The Tatar Mosque and the Church of Alexander Nivsky functioned in Khan's capital. They did not survive to the present day, but you can see them on the photos of the early 20th century. History experts call Jangir Khan enlightened one. It is true because above all, academics chose him the honorary member of the Scientific and Historical Society of the University of Kazan. He wrote down a series of epic poems and a genealogical tree of Kazakhs, known as Shijir. Probably, this is the reason they stayed in the history forever. The monarch advocated children's education. The school opened in 1841 on his initiative and with personal funds. For the first time in Buki Khanat history, students learned Russian language, arithmetic, and geography. The leader's personal library inventory is of great matter. As our chief workers believe, it is a significant historical document. They created a catalog after he died. It included 212 various books in Eastern languages. Encyclopedic lexicon in 15 volumes is among them, as well as a collection of laws in 16 editions, and so on. In those days, they considered it a great library. Han Jingir was a very educated person. He was well-versed in Russian, Tatar, Persian, and Arabic languages. His middle son, Ibrahim Bukir, became the lieutenant of Hussar Regiment. The youngest, Gubaydullah Jangirov, was a hero of Russian and Turkish war, where he got nicknamed Chinggis Khan and awarded with the Golden Sword of Chivalry. Gubaydullah Jangirov finished the war as Major General. He headed the sector of national minorities in the Turkestan region, in the Ministry of Interior Affairs. In 1888, he turned to lieutenant general. In the next six years, he achieved the rank of infantry general. Jangir Khan created the gallery collected of Kazakh's household items and history of culture. The gun room held its rightful place in it. It represented the dynastic collection of weaponry and the Kazakhstani museum business goes back to it. According to peers, the weaponry hall had numerous exclusive exhibits, which demonstrated the high craftsmanship of Kazakh artisans. The first Kazakh museum had other objects of Eastern origin, such as Asian chain mails, helmets, elbow pads, and additional military armor. People further reported that Russian emperor bestowed sabers to Han's bloodline. Organizing affairs was one of the multiple honors of Jangir Khan. The first of them launched in 1832. They took place twice a year. Merchants from Kiva State, Bukhara, and Russian counties came to fairgrounds. The business fair was very successful. 100,000 heads of cattle exported to Russia, and a 1,000 dealers from all over the world arrived at the exhibition. Out of all 89 houses of Han's headquarters, 46 of them served as shops. Trade warehouses were in 19 homes. We got details about the show having a trading volume up to half a million rubles in silver. It is the enormous amount of money for those times. They established treasury after Jangir Khan died to keep such amount of money in 1867. The museum displays reserved fireproof vault of Hanat that weighs more than one ton.
One of the wives of Jangir Fatima was the daughter of the Orenburg Mufti. She received a European education, knew several languages, and danced very well. Probably, thanks to her, Han decided to change lives of Kazakhs to settle way. Father Fatima never neglected his children's education. Besides Russian and Tatar languages, she spoke English, French, and German. Also, she learned royal etiquette, knew how to play piano, and knew the interpretation of Quran. Contemporaries tell, when Jangir was at the ball with his wife in Moscow Kremlin, the Emperor Nicholas I noticed the young girl. He asked her for a dance and was pleasantly surprised by Fatima's knowledge and sharp mind. However, she survived her husband by three months. The Urdin pine forest was planted during Jangir's ruling. Letter of Orenburg military governor attests to that. He wrote about granting blooming trees of Ford. The forest got a new name of Narin after the Han deceased. Jangir Han passed away in 1845. The power of Han did not rebuild after him. In fact, it abolished. So the Hanat was under the Transitional Council administration. Historians who study Jangir's legacy do not stop to marvel how wide his interests were. What can I say? One of the plans of the first circular school was vaccination from smallpox. Han left some of his children, and he had a lot of them, to medical rooms himself. They were first Kazakhs who got injections. Designers created the 3D model of the museum and put on the website of the Tourism Management Department. It was our request. This program gives the opportunity to people to look at the complex and spend time in each facility. All of it without leaving your home. The authorities of Buki Horde district of Western Kazakhstan region planned to construct an airport so that small aircraft would resume flying. It will allow increasing of tourism to Han's headquarters. Besides that, people are drafting the organization of recreation on the territory of the complex. In the framework of this resort, authorities want to set national yurts and establish camel excursions. When I drove to Jangir Han's headquarters, I could not even imagine what awaits me. I was very impressed with what I observed. The Buki Horde complex, where any Kazakhstani resident should travel to. Threads of time interwine here. They connect past and present of our republic and provide faith in the future. This was Travel Around Kazakhstan with Shambhalat Pazil.